Hi everyone. Um, so I've come to a decision that I've got too many didgeridoos now lying around the house. I've got five here that play well. Um, I've got another two that are a lot harder to play. So what I thought is I'll just offer them out for anyone who fancies learning a new skill, hobby. Um, if you're stuck at home, as long as you're obviously within a reasonable distance of, of me, um, I can I can drop them off to you know to anyone who's who's definitely going to going to play them and uh, and try and learn. So what I thought I'll do I'll just give them each a blow for you, show show you how they look, how they sound, and then so we've got one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and if you'd like one, then um, just just message me, and if you want to pay me something for it, then I can give you a link to do that. But uh, that I, I'm not I'm not selling them. I uh, just want them to to be used every day. Ideally, would be great. So um, I'll just talk you through. So this is this is a really nice bit of wood actually, and this I think is this is an E. So this is going to be like the highest tone. There's no. Uh, beeswax mouthpiece on there, but it's uh, the mouthpiece is pretty good. You could always add beeswax if you wanted to. Uh, so E is relatively high in pitch. I think D is kind of the classic um, Aboriginal pitch. And this is what it sounds like. So it, it, it plays pretty well. Oh, every didgeridoo, once it's full of warm, moist air, it does play better. So it can often be uh, quite hard to get going some of the time. This one is uh, really light, really, really light. So it's got pretty thin walls, weighs nothing at all. It'll be very easy for anyone to handle. Um, again, there's no Mouth, peat, no beeswax on there, but you know you don't really need it. So this is a little bit lower. This is the this is 1908. So this is the eighth one I made in 2019. Um, this would be really really suitable for anyone who wants to learn. <laughs> So that's ideal for a beginner, really, really ideal. Plus it's completely bare wood, so you could, you could have fun painting it up as well if you want to do that. This one is really, really nice. This is, this is in D, so this is kind of very classic. Um, again, pretty light, pretty thin walled. Uh, I have got the mouthpiece cut at an angle for some reason, which doesn't really hurt. So this is 1907. The third one. I think this plays possibly best of the lot. So you can see, yeah, that plays really, really well. The mouthpiece is slightly larger, so probably not suitable for a, a youngster. Um, and now we get onto the, the deep ones. This is a real beauty. This is 1905, and I've got this at C sharp. So just a little bit uh, deeper than, than that one. You can see by the length, because the, the length is the basic thing that gives it the, the tone. Um, this is pretty straight, so it doesn't bell out much. It, it, quite easy to play. This one does have some beef, beeswax on the top. So that, that one would be, I think it's more suitable, these, these lower tones more suitable for like slow meditative playing, if that's what you are into. Sit you back on there. And then this is the last one. This is the one that I finished this year, 2020. And it's, uh, it's a monster. It's, it's not very heavy, because um, it's been well carved out. But uh, yeah, 
similar similar tone to the other one, but a little bit harder to play. So I'll just pop this on the floor, I think. Yeah, a little bit harder maybe to get going, but uh, it's a beautiful sound. It's got some nice harmonics in there as well. So that's number five. So there you go. If uh, you fancy picking this up, just let me know, drop me a message, and we'll sort something out. Cheers.